Welcome everyone to Conversations for Peace. This is day 17. Amazing that we are going through this month and every single day there is another aspect of peace for us to discuss. I have a wonderful guest with me today. His name is Wayne Walker and he's from Sydney, Australia. Hello, mate. Hello, how are you? <laughs> how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm really good. So, so excited happy to have you here. I'm so happy to be here. You know, I, I think one of the um, important things for us, and particularly in, in discussing peace, you know, these conversations and why it's so important is that what we know is that we are a collective as a person, right? So we are a person and yet we are a person that is a whole collective consciousness. And I'm so excited to be speaking with you, other side of the world, and hear about, first off, I have to ask you, like, what is peace to you? Peace to me is having that stillness within. Mm -hmm. Having that stillness, creating that stillness. It's only from there that true peace can really be discovered. Um, and for me, it was, it is clearing out and losing um, identification with the lower self and, and working through my, you know, traumas, my issues, all those sort of um, aspects of my, of my lower self and integrating that within myself. And, and once that was done, once, once that happened for me, that that spill that that stillness within it just grew and just grows and just grows and you create because your mind is clear, your mind starts becoming less busy, more quiet, and things like meditation, things like well, looking like healing yourself, consciously going in, looking at your traumas, looking at your pains, looking at your limiting beliefs, and consciously healing yourself. For me, that brought me. That brought me so much more stillness in my life, and and that's how I cultivate peace, and that's what peace means for me. When I can sit back, relax, and there's nothing going on, there, my mind is still. I'm calm. I'm just going with the flow. I'm just in that pure beingness, you could say. So, for myself, um, I know one of the things that I felt so connected to you with, and we have never met, right? This is our, this is our absolute first meeting. Absolutely. And, um, and yet I was drawn to your posts on Facebook and I could feel this sense of great peace within you. And all of your posts had this very like high vibrational energy to them and, and definitely an indication that there was a higher understanding of what was going on. So, as I think about peace, you know, I, what comes to mind is, is it different in different people? Or do we innately already know what peace is? I think we already know what peace is. I think we all do. Because we're all the same thing, ultimately. You know, we are all avatars, we are all conduits for consciousness. And once we step into, I think once we sort of step out of the lower self, step more into the higher self, it just comes naturally. You know, that, 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 that the higher self aspect of us is peace. It is pure. That's an interesting concept, actually, that the higher aspect of ourselves is peace. So what you're suggesting is that if each and every one of us were to do that clearing work that you were talking about, like clearing the residue from traumas and from different patterns that we've developed in our childhood, do you think that each of us has the capacity to find that higher self? 100%, 100%. It's all natural to all of us. And, and I, I just think we get in our own ways. You, you know, we get like just 
So I think once a, an individual really does the work, so to speak, the spiritual work, I think a lot of spiritual people, they do that, you know, and, and this, and this it's, it's a journey. It definitely is a journey of purging, of clearing, of cleansing, of healing, you know, whatever word you want to put to it. But like this, this is the way I was taught and, and this is what's worked for me. So I just have to speak from my own experience. And, and I think when a person can do that and, and really, truly, genuinely, and, you know, use their honesty and, and because you really have to be honest. It, it's really a tough journey, but you have to be very honest with yourself and really, really, you know, look at these things. And that, that's why people don't do it because it's so hard. No one wants to relive their traumas because when you relive it, it brings it all back up. It brings, you have to relive it, and, but you have to cry. You have to go through the embodiment process of that pain as well and that shadow side and really, really, really clean, like just look at it. And it's just, it's very quick, really, if you can bring yourself to do it and you look at your traumas, you go through it, you, you, know, you identify it and you just look at it. And, and, you know, I've been using the Ho'oponopono, you know, um, which is, it's really a streamline, it really streamlines it and it gives you the four statements to use, you know, and, and it just streamlines the process. So, yeah. When could, and, 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 could you share that with us? Yeah, the whole point there, there may be people who are not familiar with that. Well, let me just get up. Yeah, it's the four, you, you're aware of it, it's the four mm -hmm. statements. It is, um, please oh, forgive me, I'm sorry, thank you, I love you. And basically it's a Hawaiian healing modality. And I think that, and the, um, it really means a correction in Hawaiian, that word. So it's a correction of energy. So know? how do you think it, it accomplishes that? Well, I, I think, so first off with, I for, uh, forgive me. So if you're saying forgive me, there's no way for the ego to hold on. <laughs> You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're shining. You're, and, and, and the forgive me, I'm sorry, is coming from the human. It's coming from the human aspect of yourself because it's only the human that's sorry and needs, and needs to be forgiven, you know, or forgives. But it, it's, it's, the, it's the, and the higher self, I see it as love you, thank you. Mm. You know what I mean? The consciousness is just love you, thank you. Love and gratitude. You know, so I think those four statements, when truly applied to your healing techniques, so when you're looking at your issues, when you're, um, you know, looking at your traumas, applying those gives you a streamlined effect. And how I like to use it, I like to say, so I imagine the scenario, if I'm healing myself, so say I had an argument with my dad. So I had some daddy issues when I was young. And, you know, so I had a lot of healing on him. And he was a, one of the big blocks in my life that I had to just heal from. And so... Uh, like after my awakening, I actually went through my whole life from when I could first uh, feel the, the, the first major trauma. And one of them was for my dad, but I've actually been working on this my whole life, but unconsciously, but anyway, so I, I, I applied this healing modality to the scenario. And first I would say it from little Wayne, like I, I, would, say, I, would, I would imagine Wayne and dad there. And I would say it from Wayne to dad and then from dad to Wayne and then from consciousness to both. And that, it was just, as soon as I realized it, because you, when you say, when you say, I'm sorry for this and that, and please forgive me for this, and I love you, and I thank you, and you mean it, and you feel it. Oh my God, it is so quick. You, you cry, you laugh, you go through your emotions, you embody that, and, and that just stops. It just, it just comes out and it releases. And then when you sort of then review that memory, the feeling's a lot lighter. It's a lot lighter. And, and then there are so many different techniques. Like another one is putting it into a pink bubble of, my mum used to teach me this, putting it into the, the scenario in a big bubble of pink love light and, and sending that off. So I would do all these things like that one growing up. But I think it's using these modalities and these techniques to really consciously go there, to go there honestly and truly within yourself and really these things, heal yourself. And when you do that, it's very quick. And as soon as you do it, you, you let it go and you can check the emotion and it's, and the vibration is different. And you might have to do it a few times if there's a, but this is the process. And this was, this was the process for me anyway. And, and yeah. And, 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 and I think that helps cultivate that peace within, you know. So you bring up an interesting point though, because what you're sort of putting light on is how important the intention is because Let's face it, we could just be reciting those four 
statements or four questions and then just kind of be you know waiting around for something to happen right Absolutely. and when it doesn't just saying oh that's a bunch of garbage next yes. right Absolutely. but what happens is when we go in primed our intention is to release that energy as you said our intention is to realign with our true nature our intention is to use that as a path actually like a an energy portal you might even say right Absolutely. in order for us to simply access the energies that have kept us trapped in a sense of separation or um in the trauma in the blame in the shame in the guilt in all of that and what you're sharing is so powerful because something as simple as that combined with the intention for it to be a healing agent for you to find peace now you're talking real power <laughs> now you're talking real and it's accessible to all of us you know yeah. it really is it's just like you said the intention you know it and yeah it's actually quite easy this is the thing it's it, it's just i guess i guess i guess it's just painful and we're so distracted you know no one, no one has the time these days you know kids family you know school work this that cooking it's just People need to really start creating that time, that space for themselves, you know. And this is another part of cultivating that peace within you, because this is not even possible to do if you don't have that space. You know, you need to go sit in your backyard, away from the kids, away from the family, you know, away from whatever, and just be alone, you know, without your phone, <laughs> without you yeah. know, and like, and just like, even if it's even if it's a few minutes a day, like sometimes if I've got a busy day, I like to just like take a moment, just stop and just a conscious breath, just oh. conscious breathing. It does so much in those little moments. If you can create many little moments during a day, if you don't have that time, there's no excuse. You know what I mean? You can do it. It can be done. You just have to yeah. find these ways and creating that space is really essential. You know, it's really essential to do this work, you know? So I think, yeah, there are definitely, there are definitely, steps and they're definitely tools because I developed like a, like a little hypothetical spiritual tool belt, you know, a conscious tool belt where I have all these tools at my disposal that I can use to, you know, create and create space and navigate my, my way through this new reality. And, um, and basically a lot of it is to maintain that space, you know, in the beginning it's maintaining that space and creating that space. So you can do that healing. But after a while, that space is just within. It's just there. Yeah. You make a, a very good point about how essential it is to have that tool toolbox, right? So that you know at any given moment, like you said, you know, you can feel the angst building. You can just pause for a moment, take a breath, and in that nanosecond, you have actually created a space for you to become heart-centered, to realign to your true nature. I have to ask you a question and don't mean to put you on the spot, but um, you're a young guy, you're a young guy. And I imagine that um, you might be an enigma to <clears throat> some people around you, right? What is it like for you um, do you ever feel like you're kind of going against the stream, going against <laughs> the current? And if so, like, what are some of your recommendations? Because I know that that's an issue for a lot of people. Right. I guess there's sort of two perspectives. So I'll share two perspectives. Um, before, it's like pre-awakening, before the awakening, before that huge conscious shift in my life, um, I guess I was always going, I, I guess this part of myself, the spiritual side of myself, um, I sort of kept, I, I hid it because I was ashamed and I was ridiculed and mocked, I guess, when I did speak out. Um, 
I, I, yeah, that, that, that's the vibe that came back. But, you know, I think that was also, you know, now in hindsight, that was also the reflection because I guess I didn't feel worthy, I didn't believe, so then that was reflected back to me through the exterior because, you know, this is, yeah, everything reflects. So, um, so, so that was, that was challenging as, as like, so I shut, I shut it down. I just did my little, like, research on these conspiracy theories or <laughs> all these, you know, spiritual sort of stuff, you know, in hiding, I guess, and would tell some friends here and there and when, when I thought it was appropriate. But yeah, so I just kept it to myself and lived like, led like a double life, I guess. But then after the awakening, I guess the ego went and I just didn't care. I just didn't care anymore. I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to be me, you know? And, and this is who I am. And, and, and the experience was so full on that I just couldn't hide it. Sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> um, I couldn't hide it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it and couldn't be contained. It couldn't be contained. And I just surrendered to it and was like, I don't really care what you think. This is me and I'm just going to be me and do what I feel and follow my heart's excitement. As Bashar would say, you know, follow my heart's excitement. And, and yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Yeah. And I think it's an important um, conversation because I know in our country, obviously, there's a tremendous amount of unrest and violence and there is a lot of acting out and um it sometimes may be viewed as uncool to be shifting focus off of that right and into this whole realm of peace it's the new cool and, <laughs> uh, well ex that's what i think but I also understand because even as what you described, you know, like you were living two lives, living undercover. Uh, I think for, well, I know for myself, I did that as well um, to a certain degree until finally it's the same thing. It's like, this is me and this is the life I'm here to lead. But I think for people who haven't made that, huge jump you know it can be a challenge to feel like they're being drawn against the current so what are your words of advice for people who find themselves in these conversations where they're talking about all of you know what would be construed as you know like the negative things going on all around them Energetically, we know that when we are feeding that energy, we are feeding that energy. We're feeding it with our focus, we're feeding it, right, with our words. Absolutely. So in order to help people to cultivate more peace, what would be your recommendation should they find themselves in conversations of that nature and then suddenly they remember a word that maybe you've said or I've said or someone else has said and they realize that they need to make an adjustment. Right. I, I, I think it's about balance. Uh, and I think it's every sort of conversation you have with somebody. It really depends on each, each individual's, each avatar's sort of vibration, each person's vibration. So, um, I, I think you would have to, I think it depends on each moment, but I would say believe in yourself and, and pick your audience, pick your, pick your target. Like, like what do you really need to share? It's going to fall on deaf ears. So, you know, I think when find the people that actually have that genuine excitement. So one of your friends might be into the stars. So you can talk, you can sort of, that could be a way in to talk mm -hmm. about, astronomy and you know and sort of go in that way there's many different roads in to to have these conversations um but i think all our sort of you know our personalities our egos want to say our piece and want to get our piece out there and i think maybe sometimes listening and observing a bit more taking mm -hmm. a step back taking that pause as you were saying you know and they will be they they can then create more space within themselves in that moment and maybe they won't have to say as much and and you know and and they will find their opportunity within that conversation to say what they need to say 
and, and get their message across. And they can probably say it in a more articulate, in, in a calm fashion that would be appealing, genuinely appealing to the other party. And, and I think that's how you can get in, you know what I mean? And, and shift, it's about transmuting each moment and really, you know, but it, that only comes, I think, with that calmness and that stillness and that peace. So I think by practicing these sort of things, you're taking that breath and listening and observing, taking yeah. a step back in that and moment. Beautiful, yeah, and clarifying our intention, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and when you come from that heart space, like when you lead more from that heart in that moment, it's more receptive. You look and feel it. You know, if it's too much head, it's, it's too cerebral. Like, but really, you want that coherence. You want that balance of the heart and mind because it's like this humble confidence. You, you don't want to be a doormat. You don't want to be walked all over, but you don't want to be an arrogant fool either. You know what I mean? Okay. So it's, it's that balance that's really key and it's tricky. It's tricky for everyone, even spiritual people on this journey. There's an up and down effect. Absolutely. You know? And I think for all of us, you're high one minute, you're low the next minute, you're high, you're up, you know. So. <laughs> that roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So really, like, like one of the first lessons for me from nature was, and it, I think it's quite easy, listen and observe. Uh -huh. I think that is a beautiful, beautiful recommendation. Yeah. Thank and you so much for being with us. Um, and by the way, everyone, Wayne is going to be sharing his awakening experience on the High Vibe Tribe podcast. So look forward to hearing more from him then. Um, but in the meantime, isn't it wonderful to know that there is this beautiful, strong anchor on the other side of the world, who is here with the intention of creating more peace, living more peace, and of course, being more peace. So thank you, Wayne. Thank you so much. Thank you, you Marcy. And um, for everyone, as you know, I have been reciting my peace pledge to you. And Wayne, I hope that you'll just take this in as well. Um, anyone who hasn't yet received their copy of it, you can go to heartshiftcoach.com, free download, and also um, you can find seven ways to cultivate peace at the same place. And I hope that you'll take advantage of that and just start to infuse yourself with these words and intentions for peace. And so here's my pledge to you. I pledge to extend peace into my circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, taking personal responsibility for my thoughts, my beliefs, the choices that I make, the actions that I take. And so I put my heart into making compassionate action. And I take this peace pledge with you in mind, with myself in mind, with our world in mind, and I pass it from my peaceful heart to yours. Peace in, peace out, <laughs> and until next time, which will be tomorrow, I say, have a wonderful and peaceful day. Thank you. And thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy.